404. Now we're getting into a completely automated system with no operators on board the train. And uh, again, uh, although it's a significant uh, functionality there, uh, but again, once you achieve Goa 3, the jump to this is incremental, although a little bit more, um, because your core functionality is all there. You're just now adding peripheral items to automate, to increase the level of automation. So in a Goa 4 system, the system is in full control of the track and stations. Now the system stops the train if track side elements are blocking the track, for example, tunnel vent doors. System protects work crews at track level. The system stops the train if a person has fallen the track. System opens and closes doors now. So now in a Go for system, the, the, uh, the system has taken control or, uh, of the door. It's now commanding them to open or close. The system now determines if it's safe to leave the station. So uh, once it closes the door, it ensures the doors are closed and locked ensures that all the platform doors are closed and locked, uh, ensures that if there's any other conditions that would uh, deem it unsafe, it will not leave. If it is safe, then the system decides it's going to leave. There's no more ATO start button to depart. The system decides on its own when it's safe to leave the station. Uh, the system now can take a train in and out of the yard or depot. Uh, basically, the, the trains are in the depot. Uh, it'll wake up. It will automatically perform a self-test, for example, depart, enter the main line, do its thing, then take itself out of, out of the uh, main line and back into the depot. Uh, so this, the system is now has added that capability. Perform self-test. So when a train or, sorry, we'll, we'll get into that in a section, but basically the systems are able to perform a self-test before they're they are entering into operations. And finally, system detects and manages emergency situations. And we'll talk about that in a second. And again, operation staff are not required on the train. Before I go on, one of the things I noticed about the standard, they tend to focus on the train and what's happening on the train. Um, but in some functions, I believe that the wayside should also be included. And we'll talk about that here in this particular section now. So now what you see is all of the functions that are defined in table one are applicable to goal four. A goal four system must implement all of these functions to be considered uh, a goal four system. So we've added basically uh, three new functions, supervise passenger transfer, operate a train, ensure detection and management of an emergency situation. So these three key functions are, are now added. So the first one, Control passenger doors. This is self-explanatory. Uh, train doors and, then, and platform doors are automated. <clears throat> the system determines if it's safe to open and close doors, which means when the train comes into a platform, it must align within a certain window, usually 50 centimeters plus or minus or better. I've seen less, uh, I've seen it go as low as 20 centimeters. And that is mainly to make sure that the train doors and platform doors are aligned. So the system must ensure that it's aligned properly at the station. So when the doors open, they're not blocked. Um, and if the doors are stuck, such as if, the, if you're closing the doors and it's not able to close because the passenger is stuck in there, the system has to recycle those doors. So the automation of door is now completely under control of the system. It must align, it must ensure that the doors are not blocked. It must ensure that the doors, uh, when they do close, do close and lock. So complete control of the doors and platform doors is under the control of the system. Two, prevent injuries to persons between cars or between platform and trains. Now, I know the standard is talking about this. I've never seen a part of this function. Um, usually when a train comes into a platform, there's a gap between the train and the platform. And usually on a properly designed uh, metro, that gap is very small. Uh, maybe an inch tops. And the reason is obvious. You don't want someone falling through that crack, the gap or tripping on it. I've seen some systems where the gap is much longer and I've actually seen people fall through that gap uh, in, in operations. Uh, and I never thought I would see it, but I saw it with my own eyes. So it is possible, but I don't know how a system would detect it. Uh, although I'm not aware of any system that is able to detect it. But uh, the standard is saying that for a goal for a system, the system should be able to detect it when a person has fallen in there or prevent it from happening, maybe put plates over it 
And when those plates are there, there's a, a status sent back to the system, indicate those plates are there. It's safe to safe for the passengers to uh, disembark uh, from the train. So if those plates are there or some detection mechanism to cover that gap, that's, that's acceptable um, to be considered for the goal four system. The other part is a person is in between cars. So if you have a six car train in between, for example, car two and three, if there's a person there, the system has to detect it and prevent it from departing. I'm not aware of a system that can do that. At least I've never heard of it. Um, but that's what the, the standard is saying. For goal four, you have to be able to detect the person and prevent the train from departing. Ensure safe starting conditions. Now, before a train can leave the stations, uh, the system has to determine if it's safe. So doors are closed and locked. Emergency stop buttons are not pressed, if applicable. Train has a movement authorization to leave the station and there is no hold applied to the train at the station. So these are your basic checks that, it, that the train has to do before it departs uh, the station to be considered part of GOA 4. All right, next, we have operator train as a piece of function. So this function is talking about putting in or taking out a train out of operation. Uh, so the standard talks about you have your trains that are sitting in the depot or in a storage track. Uh, the train is able to wake up on its own. Let's say at, at five o'clock in the morning, the train wakes up, it performs its self test. The system sets a route out of the yard or depot and onto the main line at the appointed time. So at five o'clock, it wakes up, performs a self test. At 5.30 a.m., it now proceeds to the departure track, gets to the departure track, and maybe at six o'clock, the system routes the train into the main line. So this entire process is now automated. Um, and once the train has gone on the track, it's performed its service and rush hour time is over, let's say around nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, the system will then route the train off the main line back into the storage lane and put it into sleep mode. That is an end-to-end -end automation of the system uh, for GOA 4. Um, and that's, that's what we have to do for, an auto, uh, for a GOA 4 system. Next is supervise the status of the train. This, now, this, this is the one that was a little curious to me. It, it only talks about onboard in, uh, equipment. So the onboard equipment has to perform a self-test at power up and during operations. So what this means is when that station, when the train powers up, it performs a check of all of its onboard uh, equipment. It checks all the inputs, all the outputs, make sure they're not stuck high. If they're not damaged in any way, uh, make sure it's safe perform a uh, CPU test, RAM test, ROM test, perform maybe EB tests, perform brake tests, perform uh, vital supervision checks, switch over one view, we see one train, one onboard unit to the other onboard unit, et cetera. Um, but this rule generally applies to all vital equipment and, and that also, and, and a wayside equipment or trackside equipment, uh, when it powers up, it also has to perform these tests as well. But for some reason, uh, the standard focus is on the train only. It, it does not mention the wayside for some reason. But I believe the wayside is also included because the wayside also performs these sorts of critical checks before it, it, it's allowed to give any movement authorization to a train. So it's a, it's a note that I just put in here um, that, I, that I was, uh, was a little curious for its absence. Uh, the standard talks about performing EB tests. So before and during operations, EB tests must be performed. So when a train, before it's sent out onto the track, it must perform an EB test. Uh, and usually it's done right in the yard, it comes out of the storage lane, apply EB, stop, uh, and then it, uh, it takes off onto the main line. And during operations, what some systems do is train will come into a platform and enable the EB buttons. And... Uh, I check to make sure that the EB is operational and it does that during uh, the during operations when it's on the track to make sure that the EBs are working. Uh, just to go back on the self-test, uh, the, the self-tests are done at power up and during operation. So if a train has been running out on the system on the track for 24 hours, uh, in many systems, the, the, the train must stop and perform a self-test on the track before it can before it's allowed to depart. Uh, many of the safety cases, the RAM and uh, the RAM analysis indicate that every 24 hours or some time period, uh, the rule of thumb I've seen is about 24 hours. 
the system must perform a self-test of some kind, both the train and the wayside, to ensure that all of their equipment is, is in proper working order. Your inputs and outputs are not stuck high or low. Uh, microprocessors are, are working properly, et cetera, et cetera. So it's done during power-up before it goes into the system. And while it's out there on the system, at uh, some periodic interval, uh, a self-test must be performed. So that's your supervised train status. The next is uh, ensure detection and management of emergency situations. So this is the last function for a GOA-4 uh, uh, to be considered a GOA-4, which is emergency detection and management of emergency situations. Um, it talks about, the standard talks about detection of fire and smoke. Uh, so if there's a fire or smoke detection on the train, usually the trains will go to the next station and stop with doors open to allow passengers to disembark and also to air out the train. Uh, usually that's how it's done. Uh, but each, each authority is different. They may have different rules. It may be that at track level, they may have uh, emergency exits or emergency, um, um, what do you call it? Siding where passengers can walk on, in which case they may stop the train immediately, and open doors and allow passengers to leave. But that depends on the authority. Each authority is different. Uh, what I've seen is most, most of the time, they go to the next station and stop with doors open. Uh, detect derailment via an external device. Uh, so if there is a device that can determine if a train has derailed, um, the wayside should create a protection envelope around the train to protect it. A broken rail detection, this is a, uh, another secondary detection device that, uh, that, that checks to see if the rails are, are broken or not. If so, you create a protection zone around that section of track. Uh, detection loss of train integrity, so your trains... Uh, if it's a six car train, there's a train integrity line that goes across the train from car one to car six. If the train breaks apart, uh, that train integrity line is broken. And when it's broken, the system has to protect the train. And usually you create a protection zone around that train and prevent other trains um, from coming into that particular area. And then finally, manage passenger requests. Uh, if there's a passenger aboard the train, there may be an intercom, there may be a, uh, some sort of a button that indicates passenger assistance is needed, in which case the system will respond by taking, going to the next station, stopping with doors open to allow station personnel to enter the train and investigate uh, what the situation may be and take the appropriate actions, whatever it may be. Um, but these are the sort of emergency situations that uh, a goal four system should be able to handle to be declared a, a goal four. So examples of goal four, Singapore, it's one of the longest driverless systems in the world, Dubai Metro, second longest driverless system in the world, and Vancouver Sky, Skytrain, which is the third longest driverless system. And also the very first system uh cbtc system in the world deployed in 1985 and it's still running off of that old technology but it, it, it's still running very efficient and uh, uh it's considered a goal for now i'm saying partially because th there are there may be one or two functions that uh the standard talks about that uh should be included as part of goal for that may not be uh some of the emergency functions like smoke detection may be missing or some other things. But all in all, these systems are very close to goal for if they are not goal for already. Um, these are systems that I've seen that I've worked on, um, and I believe they are goal for.